Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Awesome. Let's get into today. Let's have some. Let's have some fun. I'm uh, I'm excited about today. I wanted to talk today about creating a life you love, and uh, it's really interesting because it, you know our life is art. We're here to create uh, a life we love, and th there's many different ideas about you know well wh what's life supposed to be about. You know um, what's the meaning? What's the purpose? Why are we here? And it's it's a, it's obviously a really big question, and, and there's a lot of different ideas out there. Uh, about what it's about, you know, in the American Constitution, you know, everyone can pursue, uh, have the pursuit of happiness or is life search for meaning or is it about ascension uh, or is it, you know, the hero's journey of what Joseph Campbell would talk about, you know, what's it about? And uh, and uh, I, I love all of those. I love Carl Jung talking about the archetypes and and I think archetypes are a very fascinating thing to, to research and understand, uh, you know, archetypes are kind of like um, animals' instincts. It's very interesting to notice the archetypes are playing out. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a big question, you know, you know what's it about? It, and, and out of all the research I've done and studied and looked at, what it, what it seems is our life is to be. It, it's to be human and it's to be uh, in creation and to be uh, in connection with that which created us and create a life we love. The challenge is, is we can actually create anything that we want. You know, we can create anything we want, but we cannot create everything. That's a very interesting statement. And I think I might have said it, but Tez said it back to me. T Terry Upton, who knows Terry? He's a legend. He's a great coach. And Terry, Terry reflected back to me about two weeks ago. And it's been, it's been on my mind, Tez. I loved it. Uh, I think you said that I said it. So whatever. Um, I'm thinking you said it, but whatever. One of us said it. And it's really nice is that, you, you know, you, you can have anything, but you can't have everything. And the reason why you can't have everything is that uh, what you really want is to be able to enjoy things. Hey, is you really want to be able to enjoy things. And, and here's, here's the answer is if you want to go and listen to a, an orchestra play, you don't want them to all just play, play every single song all at the same time. Do you know, you don't want, that's not, that's not music, even though they, you know, all the songs are great. We don't want them at the same time. Another example is if you sat down at a restaurant, you don't want every single meal on the planet to turn up at once. And, and the reason is, is because after maybe the first five meals, <laughs> maybe you, you, you're not interested in tasting the rest of them. Does that make sense? So you can have any meal, but you can't enjoy every meal. Who's following that, Tay? Hey? Who's, who's following that? It's a very interesting thing. And so, so part of the idea of, of what it's about is, is being able to choose, you know, is, uh, is, is being able to, to choose and, and really say, okay, like, what do I want to taste? What do I want to enjoy, right? What do I really want? And I don't think it's saying I want to have all, you know, a million different types of meals that you could possibly have. I think it's choosing. And, and what's important is, is having that conscious choice, who agrees that you, you must have that conscious choice and saying, I consciously, I'm going to choose to experience this and then creating it and having it. And, and that's a very interesting thing. Whatever you choose, you will create. You can have anything that you choose, but you can't have everything. And in fact, we don't want everything, do we? When we really think about it, we don't want everything. We don't want every emotion. We don't want to be in relationship with every person. We don't want every skill. We don't want every job, right? We don't want every. We, we want to be able to pick and choose. But in this idea of choice, this responsibility of actually choosing what we want, can't it be a little bit daunting? You know, can't it be a little bit daunting as you stand there at the menu of life Wondering, well, what am I going to choose this time round? Sure, well, which one? Out of all these options, you know, what am I going to choose to experience and have and engage with? And this is where our work comes in because it's very, very interesting. What, whatever you choose, you will get. 
And, you know, obviously we know you can choose to play out from a, you know, an identity point of view and try to resolve wounding, or you can choose to just create what you love. But I think sometimes people ask me, well, Chris, how do I know what I love? What do you mean by choose what you love? I think another way to put it is choose what you'd like to taste, choose what you'd like to experience and go for that, follow through and make it happen. Whatever you choose, you will get. Now, uh, interestingly, if you do not choose something, Time's going to keep moving, you know, the, the well, time, right? The, the movement of life, life will keep moving. And so if you don't consciously put your attention on something, your attention has to go somewhere. So if you're not in a conscious choice of what it is you're creating, then whatever shows up will do the creating for you. Has anyone found this is, is they, they get to certain points and they, they don't, they're not really in a choice of what they want. And all of a sudden they're pulled over here about this thing. And then this person's drama, you will get pulled into drama, uh, upset, anxiety, health problems, all sorts of things. If you don't consciously choose, it's very, very, very important to realize if you're not in a conscious choice of what you're going for, then you're open and the universe abhors a void. You're open. And if you're an open void, it has to be filled and you'll just find yourself getting pulled. So you must have choice, but, but the choice needs to be done in, in the right way. You know, it really does need to be done in the right way. I, I spent forever uh, trying to understand how to create a life I love. And, and I would, would do one thing consistently is that I would give the power away. And I would always think that when I got somewhere, it would be better than now. So, so my structure was to have a current reality and then have a desired reality. And I always thought this desired reality would be the promised land, that it would be better. And that was money, relationship, uh, fame, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I always thought that would be better. And, and I set my life up that there was always going to be this better out there. And, and uh, I want you to imagine this. I felt like I was a greyhound uh, running on a racetrack and that plastic bunny just kept on getting it further and further away. Except sometimes I would capture it. And then when I grabbed it, and this is very literal, I realized it was just plastic, you know, and I would capture it. And then, so then I'd go, well, now what? This wasn't even what I wanted. It's hollow, there's nothing here. What do I go for now? So I'd sit back, I wouldn't know, and I'd go, I know. I need to go on a harder racetrack. I need to go chase something that's moving faster. That, that feels more comfortable. It feels comfortable. So, so write this down. I was in love with chasing. I was never actually happy to have it. I was actually addicted to chasing. I, I never actually was able to, to receive, to arrive. I was never able to arise. I was in love with loving it. <laughs> I was in love with the idea of what it might be like to actually have it, but never actually having it. It was like I was, a, a, you know, like the monkey in the cage and the bananas just out of the reach, out of reach, you know, just couldn't, could never have it. Always, always chasing it, you know, going, ah, can I get it? Can I get it? Can I? And it was always out there. It was always that thing. And, and then I would get it sometimes and I would find immediately that it's not what I wanted. And, uh, and, and then I didn't know what I wanted, you know, so, so I wouldn't know because society told me these are the things you want. This, this happened to anyone else. These are the things you want. You want to have lots of money. You want to have, you know, a great relationship. You want to have this. You want to have it. You want to be respected. You, this is what you want. And for those of us who, who, you know, took that on and then you get it, you go, oh, now what? Now what? Hmm. Now what do I want? And, and it's, it's really interesting because that question pops into your mind. You go, well, well, now what? So I was always giving my power away to someday, to someday, to someday. And, and, and that was that was really, really, really interesting. It was always someday. It was always when or if or there. It was always someday. And, and that was that was the most 
the most important thing is that it was always someday. It was always someday. But I'd never, ever, ever, ever practiced actually having it. So the first thing, please write this down, is that, that you must be it to see it. So you, you, you must be it to see it. In order to see it, in order to arrive, you actually arrive now. You actually arrive now. You actually receive it now. You be it now, then you get to see it. You get to have it. Because there's actually nothing outside of you that you can't have now. So you be it to see it. So I realized this and I was like, right, so I got to be it. Hey, oh, that makes sense. I'll be it to see it. So I'll tell you what I did. I got really, really happy. How oh, really content and happy. I closed down my business, moved to the countryside uh, out in the United Kingdom, and we were around family. And I was, I just, I stopped having, I stopped having choices. I was just it. I stopped it. And you would expect, well, he's really happy and content. I was really happy. I was really content. Everything was fine. I had enough money. I was everything was fine. I was content. I was being it. But there was like there was something missing. It was really strange. It was like I'd be it. I was it. I was there. I had it. I, there was nothing I was chasing. I gave that old identity the boot. And I said, I'm going to be it. And I meditated every day. And I went for uh, long walks with Harriet or with our dogs. And we spent time with family and, and just, you know, just I was being it. But I was so, so happy and content but there was something missing i wasn't uh i wasn't being a creator there was nothing i was going for even though i was content and happy and all these things i was told that i was supposed to do i was missing the creative edge of actually going for something hard do you know what i mean actually going for something that you don't have actually being able to enjoy the art of creating of becoming so i realized right i need to be it to see it i need to go okay i want abundance in this future and i've got to be it now so so the feeling i have now the identity must equal this identity i realized that 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 must be equal that's cool i'm happy i'm fit i'm healthy i'm in love i'm all these things and it's like right okay I did that, but why is it that there's still something missing? And that's when this next idea came into my mind is that, right, cool, getting into that is the first step. But now that I realize I'm no longer in that societal programming, I've unlocked a wizard gate, I'm in the magnetic mind, but what's life about now? What's it about now? Is that it? Do I just, uh, uh, you know, retire to the hills and become Zen? Is that what it's about? I know this big download, and it was about the idea of keeping this and holding it as true that you already, already have it. Yet you're just really excited to create this fun project or create that fun project or create that cool thing or build this new house, but from a completely different energy where you're not doing it out of any sense that it would make life better or it will make uh, or solve a problem. You're just doing it because it's an enjoyable thing to go for. That's interesting, isn't it? And what I realized is that there's uh, for everything you're going for, there's two different types of rewards. There's an intrinsic or internal reward. And then there's also things you do for an external reward. An intrinsic reward, let's say you just enjoy playing music. You just enjoy it for you. You just enjoy the art. You just enjoy writing the book. It's for you. You can do the same thing, but you're focused on an extrinsic reward. For example, you're playing the music only because you want the money. True? Or you're doing the painting only for the money. You see? And that's extrinsic. Really important. When you focus on extrinsic, the power is given away and you will not have that same sense of joy of I just want to create. So I want to ask every single one of you, 
What are things that you love to do just because you love it? And fill me in, fill the chat box up with this. Let's get this lit. What are things that you just love? You just do for you. What are some things you love to do? Dance, sing, art, fantastic. Spend time with family, walk your dog, go to the beach. What are things you just love? What a thing, writing, crafting, the beach, gardening, hiking, walking outside, science fiction, taking pictures. That's it. I lo love it. So what are some things you just love? What are some things you just love? Look at that. What a list. Meditating, watching movies, cooking, smiling, having people over for a meal. Fantastic. And you just love it. See how you just love these things, hey? Eh? You just love these things. Qigong, love it. Reading, gardening, beautiful, singing, awesome. And if you don't know some, there's a bunch you can steal in there. Traveling, Tai Chi, awesome. Swimming, just love it. So here's, here's the thing. Thank you. Thank you for typing those in. The joy you experience in life is directly reflected with how much time you spend doing those things. The joy you have in life, a life you love, is directly reflected with how much you're doing those things. Is it true? Simple statement, isn't it? Simple statement. There's stuff that you love to do just because you love it. The more you do that, the more your life you love, and the less you do it, the less you don't love it. I mean, it's very simple. It's very simple, yet isn't it sometimes true that the most simple things are the hardest things to follow through on? So my little challenge for you is to get a list, get a list of things you just love. A list, things you love, things you do because you love to do it for no other reason. I feel this world has become so focused on the extrinsic you know, we're doing something, we need to take a photo, put on Instagram, we've got a beautiful meal, but we're too busy freaking day a picture of it rather than enjoying it, you know, we're, we're, we're so busy going because we want to one up the other people on our social media following rather than actually enjoying it. So very interesting, hey, very interesting. So, so my question to you, it's a very simple one, you want to create a life you love, fill it with what you just wrote down. Isn't that simple? Isn't that very simple? is fill it with that. It's simple, isn't it? And put those as your choices. I think sometimes we're so programmed into these old choices of make money, get fame, um, look good, have a great family, blah, 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 that we're missing us. And I think the best example, if you're a parent, the best thing you can do is show your kids that you love your life because they just got mirror and you're inspiring. They go, wow, mom loves her life. Dad loves his life. Wow, that's how life is. You find stuff you love, you do it. You know, I think it's very, very important. And so when we're thinking about choices and what we want to create, most of your choices should be filled with what you just wrote out. Isn't it? Many people, they say to me, Chris, I really struggle with this idea of choices. I don't know what to put there. I've put financial abundance of sexy body, a great relationship. I don't know what else I would want. And I say, well, cut, let's, let's get excited. Let's, what is it that you would love? And so this is what I had to go through. So I was really happy. I was really at peace. But there was stuff. And so I started writing things I would love. I'd love to live by the beach. I'd love to go for walks. I'd love to do this. I'd love to, you know, I bought this amazing Jeep with this uh, pop top tail. I'd love to go camping more. I'd love to live in the, I'd love this. I'd love to write a book on things I would love, not for anyone else. And once I started choosing to live intrinsically, you know, honestly, I got, I took Facebook and Instagram completely off my phone. I got rid of all these things and I just do what I love. And, and I realized that it's very easy once you decide and own what you love. Like I love watching basketball. I love competing. I love playing sport. I love, uh, I love getting coffee every day. I love going for big walks. I love swimming in the water. I love these things. And it is so crucial because we never, well, we never get taught this. Hey, instead, instead of getting taught to create what we love, we, we get told to go play it safe, get a, get something that's going to pay the bills, get this, get that, follow these, these things. So I think it's very important to focus on intrinsic things the, and, and intrinsic rewards 
Love it, Jules. Love it. And that's, and see, intrinsic. The way you know it's something you love, it, and thanks, I'm sorry for asking, intrinsic is when you think about doing it, you're doing it because you just want to do it. When it's extrinsic, you're thinking about doing it for other reasons. So I'm going to get paid. People are going to, you know, cheer me on. I'm going, uh, you know, um, uh, others are going to say, well done. Do you see what I'm saying? It's extrinsic. It means that the, the joy is coming from how others or other things, what it will give you. Yeah, that's right, Linda. Does that make sense, Soraya? Does it, is everyone happy with that? So here's what you need. If you want to be a true creator of a life you love, and if you want to have uh, you know, this amazing life, you need to find what you love. And the reason why I bring this up is, uh, is Scotty on the call? Where's Scott Weddle? I think Scotty might be here. I'm not sure if he is or not. But um, Scott's one of my best friends. Come around. He's my business partner in the marketing uh, company that we have. And he come around on Saturday. And he, he was telling me about how he's into all of these uh, crypto investments and all these things and how he'd been, uh, you know, spending all of this um, this time on a Saturday doing all these crypto, all these things and this investment and how he's got this and this and this and this. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, like he freaking loves that. Like he's spending his Saturday morning and he's so excited. He's like, man, I've got to get back. I've got to finish this thing, got to do that. And I was like, bro, you just love that, don't you? He's like, I love it. And like on a Saturday night, he wants to, he loves sitting there and understanding and pulling things apart and fixing it. And I'm like, man, that is so cool. I don't love that at all. <laughs> I'm like, I don't love it. That's amazing. Because I was about to say, bro, I think you're only focusing on money here. But it wasn't that. It was so cool. And, and I just loved watching him just be in so much joy with it. And it really got me thinking. I was like, wow, there are just so many ways that we that our intrinsic value system uh, is going to show us what we love. And it's, it's really just up to you. But the key thing is that you do it for free. Hey, you do it for free. You do it because you just want to do it. You do it because on a Friday afternoon, that's just what you'd love to do. You wake up early to go do it. You're excited about it. You don't need to be pumped up to do it. Does that make sense? You, you just choose to do it. And that's a very big thing. And so if you want a life you love, it's going to be directly correlated with how much you choose to do things that you just do for you, that you just love. And what's interesting is maybe what you love is putting on an amazing uh, gathering or an amazing show that is involving other people, but you're in joy of the doing of it. Does that make sense? Like maybe you say, you know what I really love, Chris? Getting my family together. It's funny. It's actually selfish. You know, you actually, you love it. You know what I love? Getting everyone around for Christmas and cooking a big meal. Others might say, oh, well, you're doing that for them. You know, no, no, I love doing it. I'm doing it. Whether they enjoy themselves or not, it's a different thing. I loved it. Do you know what I mean? So, so I want you to make sure that, you, you know, you're not going, oh, well, that was, oh, we had other people in it, so that must be extrinsic. No, it's whether or not you're just happy to do it. You wait. My grandmother's like that. She she loves to cook and feed, and, and she loves, she she will do it. She is so enjoy doing it. Makes sense? So enjoy. So so this is the point, and, and I really, we're going to get into some good choices and do recode and stuff in a second, but, but many of us go, Chris, these are all the things that I love, but man, you know, I've got other responsibilities. There's other things that I need to uh, to deal with, and uh, you know how uh, how am I gonna how am I gonna deal with that? Like, yeah, this is all good, but but I've got you know I've got things that uh, that I need to do, and uh, and I think it's it's important to acknowledge that there is a, a priority list. And uh, who's heard of Maslow? Uh, Abraham Maslow and his uh, his hierarchy of needs. Because I'm going to do a little summary of it for those who don't know. Uh, if you want to go and look him up and, and study Maslow, he, he was a you know really really brilliant man in 1943. You know, released a really good 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 work, which I think is based on a lot of uh, a lot of other people's work. And you know, it's it's a, it's just a really nice map for a hierarchy of what we need. And it's typically drawn out uh, in a triangle. So uh, I'm going to summarize it. So those of you who have studied it, um, you know, in a much more deeper way, please acknowledge this is this is simply a, a, a summary. It's, it's usually drawn in a, in a triangle and, and the base of the triangle uh, is physiological needs. And I like that. And so physiological needs. Can someone fill me in? What are some um, 
some some physiological physiological needs that, that we have so so some examples might be like breathing um food water uh sleep you know you know those sort of things just look so what does it mean it means looking after your uh your body okay so making sure your body is looked after uh the, the next is safety needs okay and so, so once we've got enough food and water and and uh, you know sleep and, and all of those things nutrients, uh, the next is is safety. Hey, so so that's uh, that's that's really important. That's you know shelter, uh, making sure we have you know I guess employment in, in today's age. Employment probably fits in there, so we can make sure that we you know we have food, um, you know th those sort of things. Property that that we feel safe, uh, protected. Uh, the next is love or belonging. Love or belonging that we then then we understand, you know, family, friendships, um, intimacy, you know, th those sort of things, uh, which is really interesting. Now, now, these are these are the kind of the base and uh, it is it is a nice order. OK, the, the next two are, are interesting. This one here is esteem. And esteem, esteem needs, uh, you know, confidence, you know, that you uh, achieve things, that you're respected by others, that you feel good about yourself. And then then lastly, at the top here is um, self-actualization. Those who can't read my writing, would someone type these in um, for me um, really, really quick? Uh, physiological, safety, love, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. I'd super appreciate uh, if someone would, would quickly type those in. And of course, if, if you want a deeper understanding of Maslow stuff, then, you know, go to Google. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find some. But, but, but that, that's, a, that's enough for today. And here's, here's the reason why I'm bringing this up. Here's the reason why I'm bringing And thank you very much for typing it in. Uh, Lisa uh, says, T, you guys rock. So really important. And the, the reason why I think this is important is that when you're making choices and, and as you're creating your choices, 100% it is important that that you do make sure you you know you choose to have enough uh you know things to make sure that you have safety it doesn't have to be money but you make sure that you you've got that looked after it is important to, to choose to be around people we're social creatures uh intimacy love like that's important to us it is important that you then actualize and, and, and self-actualization means that you, 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 you're finding your true nature and purpose. And I think it's, it's, very, uh, it's very nice. Now, the reason why we have our core four choices, we're gonna get right into those now. Our core four choices, they kind of cover this, okay? Uh, it, it, it kind of covers this. So, so who knows our core four, like our orienting choices? Okay, uh, it's very, it's very cool. So, so they're they're not in any order, uh, but but one of them is I choose health and vitality, and, and and choosing to to choose that you have a healthy body is really this. Hey, it's really down here. It's making sure that you're choosing to to have you know a healthy body. Choosing uh, to love your life is the next choice. Choosing to be the creative force and predominant creative force, and then and choosing to live your true nature and purpose, it, it allows you to kind of see where that's come from. And so I want to make those choices with you today, um, but I, I wanted to bring a little bit more of a broader understanding of, of what's important in your choice making. Okay. Hey? what's important in your choice making because it's very important that you create a life you love so it's very important that you get these bottom ones figured out and then you start creating you self actualize sometimes uh, people are too busy trying to self actualize but they're not like they don't feel safe you know whenever someone says to me chris i'm starting a business i'm like fantastic a business is going to take a lot of money to start like it takes a bit to get it going you know make sure that you're looked after you know i i never suggest anyone bets their last dollar on it you know so so it, it does it does um it does help to have some of this knowledge so the core four they've been typed in there um um by roche so so how's that for a bit of coaching uh, a bit, a bit of understanding about these. What is everyone 
taking away from that? Actually, I'll, I'll ask. Uh, maybe maybe you guys want to post in what what have you learned from uh, this little um, start to this session so far? And we're going to get into some choice making uh, and have have some fun with it. But I, but I think it's a really important point to understand that you know first you get to be it, you get to have it already, you get to have it. But that's not everything. You know, once you have it and, and you're, you're, you've got this, you have it, you know, you do want to do more. You do want to actualize. You do want to, to go for it. And intrinsic motivation is a very, um, a very important thing. Choice making is a very important thing. If you don't make clear choices, if you don't go for what, you, what you're going to, to do, you, you will simply uh, get pulled into everything else. Yeah, cool. Hey, thanks for some feedback. Fill me in, guys. What are you guys getting from this? It's nice, nice to see. Nice, Sonia. Cool. Thanks, Deborah. Good. I love that, Audrey. I think it's very, I think it's very important to, to have a list of things you love. You know, many people, you know, we have this idea in our, in our society that, you know, depression is, is only a chemical imbalance, you know, but I, but I, I see that that's true. Yeah, that there's definitely that, uh, that's fine. What also is true is I just don't see enough people doing things that they love enough. Is that, is that true? Like, do you guys, I just don't see them going, well, I love all these things. Well, how, when, when was the last time you did that? You know, why did you, why did you give up dancing? Why, why are you not going to the theater anymore? Why are you like, you, you're not depressed. You're just not doing enough of things you love. Your, your day is wake up, go to work, do, do, go to, like, that's all it is. Take the kids to this, do that. It's, it's, there's not, there's no love in there. So of course you feel sad. You're not doing anything you love, you know, and isn't it, it seems obvious, right? It's like, yeah, if you do more of what you love, then you, you're going to have a happy life. If you're not doing those things, it's there. So, so I think it's a big part of why uh, a lot of people are stressed or anxious or, or not enjoying life. And, and also, you know, many of us, uh, you know, have a vocation or an occupation that we, you know, we might, we might not love. Well, if you're doing a lot of things you love, well, then it's okay, you know, that you need to go and do that for nine to five. And then, because you've got all these other exciting things that you're, uh, that you're up to. Does that make sense, everyone? Like, if you've got this life full of stuff you love, yeah, whatever. So you have to go do that to make sure you've got the money to do all these things. But if you don't have all these other things, it's kind of like, well, what am I doing this for? Yeah. And what is, I also, uh, what I also know is uh, there are some people who have never just sat and started to examine what do I love, you know? And if you take nothing from today's session, that is a really important thing. And, and I, and I want to say, I really care for you if that's you. That was me. I never, ever, ever examined what I loved. I didn't. I, I really didn't. It was my whole life was about I'm going to become a professional sportsman. And, and I, it's not about it's about sacrifice. And, and I'm going to do this. It was just regimented. I never I don't, I don't remember ever having a family vacation that, that it was, I didn't do it. I'd said I went and played sport. It, was, it wasn't about that. So I didn't, I didn't understand um, how to do something that was just for me. Like I had to learn it as an adult. So, so if that's true for you too, then, um, then I get it. I get it. I didn't know this. But if you're like, hey, I've got heaps of things I love, then, then good for you. You must actively engage in, in choosing, you know, in choosing and deciding and exploring. And you'll find things you go, I just love doing this. I could keep doing this. And I, and I guarantee for most of us, it's not what we think. We think what we would love is this amazing holiday to drink cocktails. Uh, but if you really engage with that idea, or what I'd really love is to go sit on the beach and drink cocktails, you realize that that would be really fun for about five or six days. But after about a week, you're basically a functional alcoholic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> by the second week, you know, you're basically the same as that homeless person that's just drinking on your street. You're just doing it in a more fancy place. <laughs> so it's not really what you love, you know, uh, unless it is. 
and you know that's fine but for most of us it isn't but it's funny because we think that that's what we've been programmed well that's it because we're so not used to this idea so here's the last point before we get into recode and stuff like that is um your life is made up by days hey your life is made up by days and uh, if, if you choose to focus on every single day, I'm going to find something that I just love. And, and it just for me, you're going to have such a filled life. And that's a very simple thing, isn't it? Very simple, very easy to control. You know, maybe you can't do a day, maybe it's a week for you. But if every day you find something you love, you know, just something that you're so excited about. And that's my challenge. My challenge to you is, is you don't have to make it these big things. There's something you can just totally just love intrinsically, get so much joy and reward. You can find something every single day. No question. No question. You can find and you can look forward to it. And if you do that, you, you know, you'll be in a different a different reality. Hey, Chris, here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.